for joining this session. Uh, this is this is Symposium 12, uh, Improving the Quality of Taxonomic Data Publishing and uh, List Building. Uh, we have six speakers in this session, and there'll be six more speakers uh, in the second half uh, after lunch. Uh, in each case, we're going to try and have a couple of minutes uh, for questions at the end of each session. Uh, if you are able to add them on the application, I will try and monitor them there, uh, but otherwise we'll take questions uh, here in the room. Uh, so first of all, uh, sorry, I'm Donald Hoban. Um, I'm working for Species 2000 uh, as part of the Catalog of Life partnership. Uh, my co-host for this session and the host for the second part uh, is Olaf Banki, uh, who is also coincidentally our first speaker. So I will hand over to Olaf. Thank you. So thanks very much and uh, great to see you all here in uh, Hobart and online. And um, let me see if this is working. I uh, wanted to give you a talk about uh, quality assurance and quality control uh, processes for species list building. Um, okay. I don't think it shows the next slide. Could you change it? Yeah, yay. Okay, just for the ones that aren't so familiar with species names, uh, species names are really important because if you want to gather all, all kinds of information from different sources, you really need to go through a taxonomic name to retrieve the different uh, parts you, you are working with. And uh, quality... Uh, assurance and quality control, so trust in the data is really, really important. And just to give you a, a bit of a heads up, I mean, taxonomic services are really used not only in the science domain, right? Uh, we might think it is, but uh, in fact, species lists are, are, are a lot used by different authorities. And in some cases, these are also authorities that deal with legal reporting of species names. And so you can sort of imagine that trust in the data is really important because of that. Because what if something, a species which is under legislation, suddenly becomes uh, not under legislation or, or the other way around? So we need to th keep on thinking that while we are getting data online, uh, that we have some kind of way of uh, providing trust in that uh, data. Now, Catalog of Life has been around for quite some time, uh, trying to build a, uh, how to say, or with the aim to build a species list of uh, of the world of all described species of all life. Um, and uh, right now, we reached uh, way above two million uh, accepted species. Now, what you need to know, the, the, the there is a, a large community behind that of. Uh, uh, more than 500 experts worldwide. Um, we are making use of 163 databases at the moment uh, to construct the global list. And uh, most of the data that uh, is coming to us is actually handled by the Catalog of Life Secretariat. So uh, doing all the data conversions, making sure that the pipelines are there. But uh, there's also other initiatives like Taxon Works, Worms, Avia, um, and ITIS that really play an important role in getting data up to the catalog of life. Uh, what you need to know, it's a consensus classification. Um, um, and um, uh, let me tell you just high over a little bit how data comes to us. Um, so you have this schema here, which, um, does it have a pointer or? No, not really. So um, you see taxonomic communities uh, sitting out on the left, uh, uh, editing their data. It comes to us in various ways through different uh, uh, pipe, data pipelines. I come back to that. 
later on. And um, right now, what we have is the uh, is a new infrastructure which is called the um, uh, Catalog of Life Checklist Bank infrastructure. It's developed together with the uh, GBEF uh, Secretariat, and it helps to act as an open data repository for taxonomic and nomenclatural data sets. Uh, but we also use it to assemble uh, the Catalog of Life checklist out of that. Um, and then to produce the, the, the monthly and annual versions of the Catalog of Life. This is all built off an uh, API. And I would like to briefly take you through a process uh, where um, we see the data quality processes at each level. It's not switching slides now. Did you? Turn the next slide. So I better do it by heart then. Um, <laughs> so if you look at the uh, data provider level, the level at which taxonomic editing really takes place, what you see is a scattered landscape. Many uh, taxonomists use their own systems. Some of the systems are really Word files or Excel files. Uh, others really have their own databasing system and even websites uh, up. But um, we also, um, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, some of them are really making use of editing tools. So at this data provider level, in all honesty, we don't know much about the quality assurance, quality control processes. Everybody does that by themselves. Um, if we move on to the next level, uh, sorry, this is stuck, so um, <laughs> it is really out of my head. But if you talk about the level of uh, publishing data into and converting it into right data standards into Checklist Bank, then uh, you know, we have several automated pipelines uh, established. And also, uh, um, I would say, uh, initiatives like ITIS, Worms, uh, TaxonWorks, they have their own data quality assurance processes uh, as well in place to... Um, uh, look, you get the pictures after my talk, right? <laughs> Um, so this is the first data provider level. I'm now talking about this level. So you have various ways how data comes to us. Uh, there are automated pipelines coming through ITIS, TaxonWorks, Worms, for example. But there's also the possibility to, um, to publish uh, data directly um, uh, from a data standard to a uh, checklist bank. <laughs> We hear a uh, small feedback of my own uh, voice here in the room, so that's why we're laughing. <laughs> um, so you have some data quality assurance, data control processes going on here, but uh, there are multiple processes. Now, at the level of checklist bank, what you get uh, back once you import data uh, into the infrastructure, you get uh, an issue, uh, a list of issues, uh, telling you uh, what's going on with the data. So that by call editors, this is used to check the data pipelines, to go back to the data provider, clean up data and republish. Um, um, the other things that uh, it provides is it gives an overview of the duplicates that are there in that data set. And also uh, you can search on those duplicates to investigate them uh, a little bit better. Um, okay, he's not, he's stuck again, so I can't get to my next slide. So I do it by heart again. <laughs> oh, it's there? Yeah. Good. So uh, the editors can also um, uh, make use of editorial uh, decisions. This means that they can block names or they can change statuses. So. It's not a lot of editing they can do, but they can do some checks to make sure that data sources can be merged together. Uh, you can imagine if you pick up uh, different data sources, there will be overlap between data sets, 
and that's what they manage. Now, I'll come back to how they make decisions on, uh, on, on which data sets to, to be using. Um, so then from that, they polish the data up to the uh, point where you come to the checklist output. And um, we get into monthly and annual releases of the Catalog of Life checklist. And one of the important aspects from this year onwards is that it's on a CC BY license, which is uh, really great. So all the sources underpinning the list are either CC0 or CC BY. Now, some of the criteria uh, that we are using, uh, I probably need a couple of minutes more, sorry about that. Um, some of the criteria that we're using um, uh, are listed here to compare different data sets. So we're trying to use now 13 criteria. And when we have two um, data sets that uh, we need to choose from, this is the first effort that we do. We write up a report, see how uh, data sets are scoring on these uh, um, issues or these criteria. And then uh, you can see one of the reports here where we, uh, on, uh, on Fleece, uh, we are comparing two data sets. One hasn't been updated for quite, quite some time, Parhost, and there was another, uh, the Robert Lewis World Species Fleece, uh, um, was a new source available out there. And you can sort of see the scores here is that it's, it's never a clear cut thing. In this uh, case, there's some neutral, uh, uh, so where it doesn't really make a difference between the data sets, but most of them are actually here an improvement. And that's why we decided to go for the new one. So just to say, we also have um, a working group. Uh, this is the Catalog of Life Species List Working Group. It basically, the, this group aims to improve quality of lists it's trying to talk to different uh, multiple uh, multi-level agreements like policy agreements, like CITES, uh, Convention on Biological Diversity, um, uh, including also IUCN, to see why are they using different lists uh, and what can we do to actually um, convey trust in a particular list and can we get to criteria on that? So this working group developed um, 12 governance criteria and 27 content criteria. I'm sorry, I'm hopping over this really quickly now, given the time. But uh, these criteria are now being tested on, the, on different data sets, uh, a little bit of a self-assessment. And the first score show, shows that uh, most are scoring well on the content, but slightly less on the governance criteria. Um, we're developing those criteria with this uh, um, working group led by Stephen Garnett uh, or chaired by Le uh, Stephen Garnett uh, further. And uh, pretty soon this, uh, these criteria will go out to the community for review as well. And then this is my last slide. Um, then coming back to that first uh, data pipeline. So I think one of our challenges really is for now, like how can we merge all those multiple quality assurance processes? How can we align them into one process that really, or at least some elements of a process that really moves from the data provider level, the, the point where we are editing taxonomic data out uh, up to the level where we are creating checklist outputs. And um, definitely standards are an Im important thing. Catalog of Life is making use of at least three standards, uh, ASAF, uh, uh, Catalog of Life Data Package, and Darwin Core. And um, well, it would help if we actually come together and decide on the standard so we can put quality checks on that uh, as well. Now, the basic question is actually to everybody, how can we help in this area? And uh, how can we get to this uh, quality assurance, quality uh, control mechanism? And uh, this is the start of that discussion. And you will see different presentations uh, throughout this session uh, at various levels. Thank you.
it over to the next presentation. What does anybody in the room would like to ask? <laughs> Thank you, Ola. It's Nikki from Q. Um, I'm interested in the governance criteria. We went through them a little quickly. Yeah. Um, was there anything about uh, longevity or handover in that? I mean, we know that we have single points of failure in, in some of the experts that manage these lists. I know it's not something we can necessarily fix with the criteria, but at least to surface that problem. Yeah, to surface that problem, I think that there are uh, 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 things in there. We also, when we compare lists, for example, we also look at the stable delivery, for example, if that's feasible. But let me see if I quickly can go there. Uh, sorry, this one you were talking about. Yeah. yeah. So let me see. It's access community support, um, scientific value updating. So we are really looking at stable delivery. That's that's uh, that's what we have here. Number seven. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Elspeth also put her hand up. So are we almost ready for the next presentation? Okay, then close it. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, Elspeth from the Royal Botanic Garden, Edinburgh. It was just a quick question about how things get into the checklist bank um, and what the mechanism for that is. And is it is it effective? Is it actually catching all the all the information? Is it getting in there? So how is data getting into checklist bank? That's, so there are different processes. You could actually uh, register yourself and just upload the CSV file. That's the most lowest level that, that we can think of. Uh, there are pipelines going from GBIF into Checklist Bank, um, and it goes also through different editing tools. So the, you have various options how you uh, would like to enter. Anybody who is interested in sharing data sets, please talk to Olaf or myself, and we will gladly help but it's act it's pretty simple really okay good thank you uh, uh, so the second uh, the second talk in this session is from Diana Hernandez uh, who will be speaking remotely and I've left the title down there um, uh, but she is also speaking on the catalogue of life processes when we're ready. Okay, <laughs> I can see.